Yeah, this is an opportune time to recognize a milestone for a longstanding member of the staff. Uh, at the end of the year, Bob Zeller will be retiring as a director of sales, Wire Association. And he has, you know, just for background, he has 33, 33 years as an employee, but he also served, which I have to maybe compare notes with Bob on this, but he too served as a computer consultant for us the Wire Association, actually before he was hired full-time. And as everyone knows, he's been directly responsible for advertising and exhibit sales throughout his entire tenure. He was intimately involved in the, growth, in the growth of the show over the years and has been a steady hand in managing his critical, this critical activity. Bob has agreed, uh, and I don't know how much we had to wager there, Steve, but Bob has agreed to remain in less than full-time advisory role through the Operation Summit and Wire Expo in June of next year and serve as a floor manager for the event. So thank you, Bob, on that. This means that we will get a chance to see him in person in the event and you can congratulate him personally for his career, long commitment to the association and to the business of manufacturing wiring cable. Now we've asked Bob to share his thoughts with us as part of the clock winding ceremony. So you'll get to hear him here in just a few minutes. Bob, Bob, thank you, but we'll circle back around here in just a minute. So the next next item on the on the agenda is the clock winding ceremony itself, Martin Thacker. Um, for those who don't know the history here, WAI's clock winding tradition originated when John Rigby and Sons of Manchester, England, presented the Wires Association, Association with his 400-day grandfather clock at its annual convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on October 20th, 1948. The gesture represented a group of 32 companies from Great Britain. The clock was given an appreciation for the support provided by the US wire industry to Great Britain during World War II. Each year from the UK, someone, a representative from the UK makes a trip to the United States to participate in the annual ceremony that commemorates the friendship and communication between the two nations. So now it's my great honor to welcome back Mr. Martin Thacker, our virtual, virtual clock winder for 2021. Mr. Thacker was born in Chesterfield, Derbyshire. He is a freeman of the company of Coulters in Halmashire. His family members have a number of links with the metal manufacturing industry. His great grandfather, was a culturally manufacturer. His grandfather was a wire drawer in Sheffield, and both his father and uncle worked with Markham and Company Limited. Both family members worked for Byron Dockin, Chesterfield Cylinders, and Burrell. Mr. Thacker is also a presiding justice for the North Derbyshire Der uh, Mag Magistrates Bench and Vice Chair of Northeast Derbyshire District Council. He's a member of the Court of Worshipful, Worshipful Company of Tin Plate Workers, alias Wire Makers in the City of, of London. For several years, he has been a panel member of the Metals Industry Apprentice of the Year competition sponsored by the company. Martin, with all that said, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I am disappointed not to be with you in person today. But last year, I had the honor of being the first person to conduct the clock winding ceremony via virtual means. I am now the very first person to have conducted the clock winding ceremony via virtual means twice in succession. Well, I thought it would be acceptable to be part of today's clock winding in another capacity to give you added value. I am chairman of Northeast Derbyshire District Council and the chains I'm wearing are my civic chains of office. The district has an association with the wire drawing industry in the neighboring city of Sheffield. I hope you consider the association appropriate. Well, as a result of COVID, the last 18 months or so has witnessed a tale of retreat and recovery. That is how it has been described by KPMG International Limited in the United Kingdom. COVID-19 was the catalyst 
for a dramatic collapse in deal activity in spring 2020. But a recovery has been evident from autumn of that year. There have been other issues causing hesitancy, such as Brexit and a general election, but no one wanted 2021 to be another lost year. Industry forecasts indicate that recovery will continue to be positive. Unfortunately, the great English explorer, Sir Walter Raleigh, saw the reverse. He started out as a highly regarded sailor who visited the Americas and discovered tobacco and the potato. However, on this day in 1603, Sir Walter went on trial for treason. The good news is he was released from the Tower of London to seek gold in Guyana. The bad news is he was later executed following another trial for treason. The Tower of London will be the venue for a special anniversary of the worshipful company of tin plate workers, alias wire workers, in the city of London. The historic venue will be an ideal backdrop to our company's 350th anniversary of its founding in 1670. We have already enjoyed the splendid surroundings of the Great Hall at Guildhall in the City of London just a couple of months ago, when we joined with the Company of Pattern Makers and Company of Wheelwrights, also celebrating their 350th anniversaries. You will note that neither of these events were carried out in 2020, but then you will know the reason why. The wire industry has come a long way since the Worshipful Company started in 1670. Its wire working mainly consisted of making wire objects such as cages, animal traps and fish hooks. In this modern age, Steel wire is used in many forms, ranging from pins and needles to engineering and automotive components, such as springs, bars and rods. While copper-based wire is the mainstay of the electrical and electronic industries. The livery company's exclusive crafts in earlier centuries have become modern, competitive, highly automated, high-tech industries. Today, there are some 15 ferrous wire drawing and cable making sites in the UK, producing around 160,000 tonnes of wire every year. Of course, some of that wire will then become a part of clocks. Very fitting when you consider this clock winding ceremony. The annual tradition of clock winding symbolises the bond between the United Kingdom and the United States. It remains symbolic of the close ties between our nations through the wire industry. I believe that the motto of the livery company of template workers alias wire workers is extremely apt. The motto's translation from Latin is be united in love. Thank you for allowing me to be part of our ceremony, which continues to unite us all. So over to Steve to help me wind the clock, please. Thank you. Thanks for the memories. Believe it or not, it's almost 50 years I've been somewhat associated with the Wire Association uh, in different aspects. 
However, I must say, at least I'm not saying a full goodbye, at least for the moment. When I think back to my first introduction to the Wire Association, there was a small house on Monterey Street in Brantford. I thought, this is never going to work. Five years later, to my surprise, a building was constructed in Guilford. And to my further surprise, a few years later, I was getting phone calls to make this new in-house computer system work. And thus my beginnings with WAI as a consultant programmer, as Tom said, for almost eight years part-time, mostly in the evening. I thought it was um, uh, Monk Munger, as I remember, who came down one day uh, while I was working, asking me for assistance in managing the Interwire trade show. And I thought, I wrote all the software after eight years. How hard would it be to manage the show? Little did I know. And thus my history with full-time services at Wire Association began and continued through today at almost 35, 33 years. Probably the most enlightening experience I've had over these many years has been the friendship both in business and personal. We are a family within the Wire Association. I feel retiring is the right thing to do to allow me to spend more time with my family and friends and do some traveling. The interaction I've had with my family on retiring has been the most emotional, but they encourage me to go out and live my life vertically and do not let the couch potato get to you horizontally. <laughs> so without Going too far further and getting too emotional, I wish to thank all of my colleagues, friends, staff, and my good friend and mentor, Steve, who has gotten me through 33 years. And of course, my right arm over here, who you can't quite see, but my wife, Kathleen, who has put up with all my uh, good times and bad times and travel, and for sure, uh, do send me an email or a voicemail once in a while. I don't want to just shut the door. I look forward to seeing you guys in Dallas and give a handshake or two. Thank you. Bob, on behalf of the board, you know, thank, thank you. And absolutely all the best in your next chapter. Um, anyway, just an awesome contribution, 33 years. And I didn't realize the computer part was eight years prior to the 33. So again, thank you on behalf of the board. Very much appreciate all your contributions over the years. Thank you. Thank Looking you. forward to Dallas. And Martin, Martin, thank you too. We appreciate your time. Hopefully we won't do, be doing this virtually again next year. Yes, I hope it's for uh, real and in person. And thank you, uh, in any case, for allowing me to be part of today. And uh, I wish you the best for the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. See you soon. Bye. All right, take care.